All right. Uh, yes, I will talk about secure network control systems. So, what is that? Well, I'd say it's an instance of uh, cyber-physical systems. And in this particular talk, I will mainly focus on what I call industrial control systems, and many of you, I'm sure, know what it is. Uh, but what we're concerned about is physical processes. We want to control uh, the physical processes, such as power systems, gas distribution systems, water distribution systems, etc. And how do we do that? Well, we often they share a common uh, topology, let's say, architecture to doing that. So we have remote stations out in a wide area that sense and actuate using embedded controllers. And then they can communicate over some SCADA communication systems to a control center using, for instance, 4G or 5G or a fiber network. So these are systems that is one particular instance of cyber physical systems that we've been working on for quite a while. Of course, there's other very uh, relevant applications that could be called CPS, such as autonomous vehicles, cloud-based uh, control, IoT, etc. So these all share similar problems that I will talk about here. So what, what is the main problem here? I think this, this picture summarizes, I think, one of the main problems, that many of these systems have been designed for safety. Uh, there is a physical system there that if it fails, it can hurt a person. So somehow, the functionality is built for that. So then the security people come in and say, oh, here's a big red button that we need to protect it from cyber attacks. And then you want to add complexity. Well, that can interfere with the safety functionality. So suddenly you have this potential conflict and often it's different type of people doing safety and security. So yeah, I think here is at one of the roots of the, of the problems. And there are lots of uh, vulnerabilities stemming from this. And I'm listing some of them here. So it's a very strict operational environment, these control systems. There's lots of legacy equipment they have developed over decades. So patching and frequent updating is hard, uh, basically because systems are running all the time, it should deliver the, the power, etc. Plus, as I said, its safety has been at the design, been in the back of the heads of the designers from the beginning. So a lot of standard security functionality, antivirus, intrusion detection, encryption, etc., it's not really supported there, at least by the standards. So you cannot take that for granted. So we need to somehow take that into account when we want to do, solve security problems. And you see here the figure to the right. It's kind of, it's, it's a, a block diagram illustrating the components. We have a physical system, we have communication networks, we have controllers, actuators, sensors, etc. There's lots of potential points of cyber attack. So basically I'd say a lot of these systems are designed for an older threat landscape. So in fact, just to show you that I'm not making this up, that there are lots of reports ranging back at least for a decade. These are different malwares, basically designed by very advanced attackers, basically designed to cause physical damage in power systems, etc. So there's different generations of these malwares coming out every year. And there's been some, some incidents, for instance, from Iran and also one in Ukraine in 2015. So these are, it's, a, it's a real threat. So in the, my remaining time, uh, I would like to just show you a little bit three short examples of the type of research we're doing. So I'm a control engineer, so we're more working at the sort of the control functionality level. So what can we do there? So one area we've been working a lot on is in power systems. So here, for instance, we've been working on uh, security metrics and risk analysis. So basically, how do you measure, can you quantify the security you are offered by the present applications? So for instance, here you see a graph of the 500 available sensors in, in, a, in a network. There's lots of redundancy because of the cyber physical interactions in the grid. So here we've been ranking all of these sensors from vulnerable to very safe. So for instance, if you make a risk analysis and assume that an attacker can attack seven points simultaneously in the network, which sensors are then susceptible to undetectable attacks? Well, it's the one, the 300 sensors there that are marked red. The sensors that are above that, they're not susceptible to this type of attack. On the flip side, you can prove that the ones in blue, you can actually detect and actually automatically correct such attacks. And the ones in between, you can basically, you get a warning if there's an attack. So basically, you get an idea of what type of functionality, security you get from the present topology. So if you'd like to introduce more security into your system, maybe you should start with the red points. That's 
those legacy devices that you maybe should worry first about. So that's one type of result from, from our work. Here's another example where we're looking into another type of metrics. Uh, a popular error these days is anomaly detectors. People are using AI, models, et cetera, to try to figure out anomalous behavior. But at the end of the day, you need to choose maybe one anomaly detector over another, and you need also to tune a lot of parameters. So how do you compare? Well, this is one attempt to do that. So basically every type of detector, here's we're looking at different type of learning and model-based detectors. Every detector gets a curve. We're using optimization tools to draw these curves. And basically what it's showing on the x-axis is the false alarm rate, if you like, or the mean time between false alarm, versus the physical impact of a possible undetectable attack. So it's basically a measure of physical impact of an attack versus false alarm rate. So basically the lower you are, the better. So in this case, the, the yellow curve is the best one. And the curve also tells you something about how you should tune the parameters in the text. So it's like a way to try to quantify your detectors and how good they are. Finally, I'd like to uh, show you that there's a lot of interesting mathematics in this area. As, as a control engineer, we like that. Here is one particular example we've been looking at. It's a feedback system with a plant controller. And we have asked ourselves the question, if we have intrusion in the sensor network, how, when and how is it possible for such an attacker that based ba solely on analyzing the stream of sensor data, when can they reconstruct the internal state in the controller itself? Uh, that is kind of a question. Let's say that the attacker would like to understand what the controller is actually doing. Uh, and it turns out it has a very clean, nice answer. It shows that this is possible if and only if the control algorithm itself is internally stable. So basically by de designing a special type of control ar uh, algorithms, you can basically ensure that the uh, attacker can or cannot reconstruct certain type of data inside the, the architecture. So there's a lot of nice mathematical problems here also. Uh, so I think my time is coming to an end maybe, and I have some final takeaways. So I think securely in this area is, is a very really an increasingly important area. There's reports from nuclear, water, gas, process industry all the time. Uh, so yeah, critical infrastructures is something we need to worry about. And I say that the standard IT security solutions are very necessary here. We should work on that. But I say that you also need to understand the applications and the safety constraints involved here because they really are the underlying need that these systems solve. Uh, so in our group, we work on different aspects of this. I've shown you three examples. So energy management system, security metrics. But in general, I'd say we work on this confidentiality, integrity, and availability in the closed loop. So what those aspects that we look at in cybersecurity, how is that reflected and how do we address those in a, in a closed loop dynamical system? And by that, I think I will... You used your seven minutes really well. Uh, thank you. So my question is, in what way can AI help close the loop? What, yeah, so um, I think I already mentioned that when we, when we looked at the anom anomaly detectors, I think that is, I think, maybe the first place I would put it. So at, not at the close to the process. I would not put uh, maybe AI to do the critical uh, control close to the, to the physical process, but rather maybe taking a step back, looking at the data, providing warnings, saying that here appears to be uh, anomaly, and et cetera, and then you can take it from there. I think that's the first place one, one should look into it. So, Should that make us optimistic? Are these great opportunities? I, I, I think so, mm? yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Henrik.